This is Star Talk. This is from Chris Emmett, and he says, how does art inspire scientists to think outside of the box and vice versa? So for you, how does art push your boundaries, your perspectives uh, further out? And for you, how does mm. science push your artistic boundaries? Is, is, I know you did, uh, what was it, the uh, monolith of the Phobos, right? Yeah, monolith of Phobos is our record title. Yeah, so like, I mean, clearly there's an association there for both of you. So yeah, I mean, for me, for me, fundamentally, music is mass. I mean, you know, there's basically uh, X, Y, Z axis of of the time in which the note is placed, the pitch of the note, and then the the volume of that note. I mean, timbre could be arguably a fourth axis. But I mean, it's very mathematical. It's easy to chart music on a graph. And so, you know, I think any musician who stops to think about it would, would, would really, you know, think of, of melody as a kind of audio geometry, you know. So, I mean, it is mass. And most of the people that I know who are very mathematically minded uh, are huge music <laughs> nerds, you know. Um, my friend Eric Weinstein, who's a famous mathematician, uh, physicist, economist, you know, he all he ever wants to talk to me about is like whether Robert Johnson is cooler than Roy Harper or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. cool. Well, for me, the, the, you, ask, you asked me this question. Um, I know that I, I'll just say that I love space art. I love space art. I love what space artists do, the scenes that they create. You know, and you I mean, need them at NASA, don't you? Because often you have to visualize illustrations um, that I notice when you, I mean, you can't take a picture of an exoplanet, but, I, but NASA releases these sort of illustrated what if it, you know, what if a we lot have, of, were sitting on, you know, Titan or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes. But I'm talking about the genuine space artists who just do it for a living. And I'm so, I'm, this is another one of those things I did that, uh, you know, I'm very happy I did. I didn't, don't think anybody was doing it before I did. But on our Cyclops website that we set up for the public, that is, you know, me and the Cassini imaging team, there's a special section there that is devoted to space artists. You know, just what the, the scenes they've depicted of Saturn, or we, we actually go beyond Saturn, but the rings and Titan. And, and I love looking at those, and I love looking at, you know, just what the scenes on exoplanets, because that's a way to be there. You know, right. these There's people... a beautiful painting your friend did of the rings of Saturn, the view of looking at those irregularities that are like, how high are they? Oh, the fabulous. Okay, wonderful that you brought that up, yeah. because we found in the rings, we found um, this incredible thing. I mean, the rings are only 30 feet thick. Okay. Right? That's but they're like, so wide. They're bigger than the Earth, like you know, much bigger, right? I mean, it, They would fit in from end to end between the Earth and the moon. Yeah, wow. exactly. So I love, and, and then we found on the edge of the B-ring, and we also That's found thin. a similar thing uh, on the edge of a gap in the outer A-ring. We found these mountainous waves of rubble that extend two and three miles high. Because wow. of the resonance with the moons, right? Yeah, it's a little complicated. In one case, a moon is nearby, and it actually, because it's on an inclined orbit, it draws the particles out of the plane. Right. It's not complicated. It's just like pushing a kid on a swing, and every time you push That's him, a, it goes farther. Right, okay, except that what's complicated is because of that pushing on the swing, the orbits of the particles become eccentric, and that means in certain regions of the orbit, they get squeezed, squeezed together. together. And that has to push them higher. Right. But on the outer edge of the B-ring, these things are, these rubble piles, these rubble mountains are very irregular looking. But they're high. So imagine this. You've got a sheet of material that's 30 feet thick. Something coming out so it, it, that's miles high. And I, I've often said in public, and how I fast love, are you spinning? Like 40,000 miles an hour? Yeah. Right, yeah. and so so you say you'd like to take a craft there one day, but are you just being hyperbolic? Because I mean, that sounds like a very dangerous place to drive a. a I don't vehicle. care. I'm just. This is just like all in my mind's eye. I'm. Would it ever be possible to actually have a shuttle craft that close to these spinning yes. debris yes. rings? Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh my God, that sounds so you like could, some you serious could be, extreme sports to me. You could be over the rings. You know, and if you're really close to the rings, the rings would look like they extend to infinity to you effectively. Sure. Right? You're so low. And imagine you're flying, you're flying, you're flying, and then you come across a wall of rubble that's two or three miles high. So I, the artist who did this, I think, had heard me say that, and he wanted to paint it. So we went back and forth as to what it should look like. And um, it's You're in a Chevy Nova. 
No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no. no. Great name no. for the car, though, yes. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not sponsored I, I by love, I love the connection between art and, and science. science.